Hello, I'm Ricky Gervais. To some, society is a cage, trapping and oppressing free-thinking individuals. But to others, society offers essential structure and regulation, preventing anarchy and the worst excesses of human behaviour. Each society has its own codes of conduct, ways of doing things. But who decides these social norms, and how are they governed? From the formative democracy of ancient Greece to the communist totalitarianism of Soviet Russia, history has shown us that there are as many forms of society as there are people to populate them. To discuss society and our place within it, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. You know the score, little round-headed twat. Right. In ancient Greece, every year, 500 people would be selected from that Grecian society, and they would have to sit there that year, and they would propose laws, and everyone else would vote on them. And that was their obligation. They were obliged to be one of that 500, if it be like jury duty, called up, and then they had to propose their ideas, and then the rest of the citizens f voted on it. Now, if you're in that position, all right, you're called up, what rules and laws are you instigating? You might go, right, I, I want... Uh, I want an egalitarian society. I want freedom for people. I don't want slavery. I don't want any sort of oppression. Would that be high on your list? Well, you could say, you know, when I worked at Cordon Bleu, there was times when I thought being treated like a slave here. Mm. Mm. You, you weren't, weren't though, because you were being paid and you were free. So. Definitely what do you mean? I wasn't free. I was on like from from nine till six. Yeah, you had the choice to leave the job. Slaves didn't have a choice to leave. They, go, they wouldn't go. They go. Well, I didn't have any actually, choice. Um, actually, Mr. Jackson, mm. um, I'm I'm yeah. thinking of leaving no. your employment. No, um, the you? money's no good, no. and uh, I don't like the uh, the twillings. <laughs> no. They didn't have that choice. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, you did, the only yeah. other choice was Tesco, and they'd already turned me down. No, that's not. That's not. <laughs> that wasn't no choice. That that's wasn't why. A, yeah. That wasn't the lack of choice given to most. But the slaves, the slaves who built the pyramids, that wasn't option for them. It wasn't like they could no. go and, well, I, I oh, could no. get a better gig on the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. No, you're not saying anything. You're saying <laughs> absolute drivel again. Um, Here's a little Greek proverb for you. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. What do you think of that? That's amazing. Can you say it again? Say it again. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Do you understand? Yeah. Just saying, uh, they're planting a seed, they grow a tree, but a trees take ages. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. That old fella's not going to get any joy out of that. Right. But, if he's lucky, yeah. the fella next door might have done the same years ago. So it's all about, sort of, planting a seed, looking after each other. That's great, actually. It's not, I don't think it's directly it's what almost, it means. It's almost the point. Yeah, That's yeah, good, yeah. yeah I, I think he means that future generations, but yeah, if the, if future, yeah, the, if the next door neighbour had done that, then uh, yeah, that works as well. But that's, yeah. but you seem to agree that that's a good point. Do you agree that seems a good point to you? Um, but I'm, I'm sort of guessing he, he enjoyed gardening anyway. Part of the enjoyment right. was in planting that seed. Oh, we, we it, it's the old metaphor problem again, isn't I know, it? Yeah. It's not specifically about trees. You know, you plant the tree, as you say, and you may never see the beauty of or the benefit of that tree, but other people will. But, but, but as a metaphor, what he enjoyed is the fact that he's added to society and human life, and he's got a legacy and all that. But so by I the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right, now there they have motorbikes, people flying round on them, mm. P people don't wear helmets. You might even get three people on a moped. Mm -hmm. I saw a farmer with a goat in a basket. They don't care. They're mm. whizzing around at high speeds. A lot mm. of deaths there. Yeah. Um, and they'll have a lot of them, them see that those areas where someone's come off, been killed, people put flowers there. Yeah. And because that happens a lot, it's a lovely green island. Now here, we're saying whoa, whoa, we're whoa, 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 whoa. You're you saying what? that all the deaths make it nice because there's makes flowers. It makes it lovely. Because there's loads of flowers everywhere. So with mm. death comes beauty. So that's another metaphor. You can have that one. <laughs> that was one of the most now, tortuous <laughs> things I've ever... That was extraordinary. But look, look at London. That was extraordinary, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. Carl. Well, look so, at London, though. Let me finish point. my point. Let him finish his point. Let him yeah, finish his point. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Right. London councillor with his clipboard need a speed bump here I saw someone doing 35 put some traffic lights there and a pedestrian crossing mm. pelican crossing there as well mm. and a speed camera right horrible and grey 
Okay. No flowers. But you still see flowers left behind where people have died in terrible accidents. They're not many good all the ones. They stuck to a lamp post with elastic band round them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look nice. He knows the quality of flowers. Yeah, but the point wow. is this. Is the point is Some 15 year old got run down and you're disappointed <laughs> at the quality of the flowers. Look at this, Suzanne. <laughs> Fella lost his head here. Geraniums? So, Geraniums? For fella lost bloody head? <laughs> well, that's so we have to, we have to encourage that, gun crime so that people will get shot in inner cities and then we can put flowers up and beautify the areas. No, what but you're if saying? an area is nicer to look in, nicer to be in, if it's nicer looking, um, <laughs> you don't get people speeding around like lunatics. Because they go, I'm not in a rush, I'd quite like to slow down this there. This is so complicated. Flowers. So now what you're saying is because an area is grey and gloomy, people speed around to get out of it, in the course of doing that they knock people down, but then flowers are put up, which then makes the area beautiful, thus stopping people driving around at speed so death no longer occurs. <laughs> well, they're cute to getting out of their cars to, to put down flowers. And, <laughs> and they get knocked down. Yeah, yeah. Well, other people on their way to put some flowers down. Yeah. Just sometimes people have to die, don't they? There was a fellow outside our house who had a lamppost. He had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh at a man's head coming off because no. the way you said it. But, but that's the thing. <laughs> he, had a, he, he had a. Oh God! There's a man. There's a guy near the house. He had a lamp post. <laughs> he had a helmet on, but his head come off. <laughs> so yeah. you're saying that be, because in that one instance the helmet did not save his life. His head was in great condition. It's just not attached <laughs> to his body, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> Sometimes people have to die. How far, how far do you take all this stuff of, of, you know, safety gear and slowing down and wear bright clothes at night and it's just too much. Very important point, you see. We give people crash helmets, we give them, you know, seat belts, we make them wear that, right? Do you think that's right for a start? Do you think someone should be made to wear a crash helmet? They're only hurting themselves. Uh, crash helmet. I don't think you should get fined for not wearing one, but yeah. then if, if, if you come off a motorbike and you hurt your head and you didn't have a helmet on, then you can't sort of go, well, they should have had speed bumps there. Yeah, I didn't it's realise it's we're going too fast. Don't forget, we're not just protecting him, he could be a father with two kids. So you're going, oh, let him, oh, if he doesn't want to wear a crash, I mean, let him, let him get brain damage. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, we're, we're over the top in this country. No, but you, so you're saying, sort of if you're thing. saying, no, if he doesn't want to wear a crash helmet, let him not wear a crash helmet. He wears, he doesn't wear a crash helmet, he comes off his bike, he smacks his head in, he's a vegetable. He's like that, ah, sitting at home, like that. Ah. And yet the two little kids come to you, you're in charge, don't forget, we put you in charge of society here, and they come to you, two little kids, they go, President Pilkington, what? why did you let my daddy wear the... Why not wear the crash helmet? I didn't. We paid, uh, we put leaflets through the door. We yeah. had adverts on the telly sun shining. Yeah, but, but it's why? It's your dad's fault. But why wasn't it compulsory? Because he wanted, it's, it's not the world we live in, Sonny. Yeah, he's, now I haven't got a daddy. Has he got an helmet at all? Have you seen he's an helmet knocking about? No, he's, he's just a vegetable uh, now. Yeah. yeah. he didn't want to wear a crash helmet, but why didn't you make him wear a crash helmet? It wasn't just him, it was us. <laughs> why did, why did you turn my daddy into a vegetable? Where's your mum? Mum, mum, mum left when he kept, he kept going on about not wearing a crash helmet. Right, she I'll put you in a home. <laughs> I just think, you see, this is the problem. Everyone's looking for someone to blame. Yes, but this is interesting though because you you were particularly callous to that little four-year-old boy. He seemed yeah. so sweet and adorable. Yeah. But why wasn't he giving this stick to his dad? Well, his, his dad's, dad's dead, vegetable. vegetable. He's dead. Yeah. He's good as dead to him. His dad went within the law. It was not the law to wear a crash helmet anymore because you said, forget it, I don't want a nanny state. I don't want, if you wear a crash helmet or not. He wasn't a responsible parent. He hadn't thought it through. But this is your job. Some people aren't responsible. Society keeps them in tr on track. This was your, you were in charge. You should have made him wear a crash helmet. He had two kids. We've heard from one of the kids. What's the other one's attitude? Is he, is he he's young bit, or he's a bit younger. Is he, is he even younger still? Yeah. President Pilkington. Uh, my brother's crying now because you shouted at him. I wish you'd have made my daddy wear a crash helmet. Why didn't you make your daddy wear a crash helmet? Well, he won't listen to me because I'm not in charge of society. He didn't listen to me. Yeah, but it seems like a bit of a, a numb nut, to be honest. No, he did listen to you. What did he do you for made a living? new rule saying people don't right. have to wear crash helmets. Right. What, and he listened what, to you. Did he, did he pop shoes on in the morning when he went out? Or did yeah. he need to be here to tell him to do that as well? well? No, there's certain things. Oh, so he has got do. some common sense then. Well, enough, yeah. Oh, right, interesting. Yeah. So he can be bothered with his trainers, but he can be bothered with helmets. Oh, I haven't got a daddy. Jesus. 
Wow, you are cruel to this kid. You it's are just mean uh, this, all to I'm this saying kid. is there should be a leaflet. <laughs> I don't point. even know how he got in number ten. This little kid. The thing is, but he's got in. You should have at least a courtesy to listen to his point. Forget all. I'm I'm sick and tired of having adverts on the telly. Don't smoke. Wear an helmet. Slow down. Watch your kidneys. Look after <laughs> yeah, your liver. I seen that one. Now <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Why can't they just put a leaflet through saying, hello everyone, use your common sense. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm asking. Because, that's what I take Because some people don't have common sense. Some Everyone's got common sense. Some people are fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah, they should, they're, they're, it's not my fault that's then. Why yeah, that's not why there fault. is a government. If we let if we let people, they'd be fucking idiots. They'd be eating turkey Twizzlers and fucking watching Big Brother and X Factor well, all day. Doing. They are And they're doing. letting their kids run riot in well, the they street. they are doing. Some families do just eat turkey Twizzlers. Yeah. There is little knobheads on bikes playing out till God knows what <laughs> exactly. hour. Exactly. So it's happening anyway. But yeah, but that's no argument, is it? It's happening anyway. That's no argument, Carl. It's what we've talked about here. Social responsibility. The reason people get into politics is because they feel it's their obligation to change those things. This is your approach. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Yeah. I don't- I don't- that the people who don't wear an helmet, sort of, they do themselves in and that's cleared them off. That's one problem sorted. So you think- you, you're, you're being Darwinian. You're thinking survival of the fittest. The idiots yeah. will suit- but they don't. Because it- they're not just the victims. The dead person isn't the victim. It's the, you know, uh, a very good example is, um, okay, we've talked about it before, you know, people who smoke know that it's dangerous. We know now that smoking gives you cancer. But why is that still legal? And yet people know that and they still smoke. Fat people know that they're going to get out of breath and clammy. And yet they still eat more. They get depressed, they're eating more. They know that they're, they're going to be constipated for a year and a half, but they're still shoving in chocolate cake instead of carrots. But because that's what I'm saying. Why don't we stop them? Why don't we stop fat people eating? If you've got a smackhead and you really love him, you intervene, you grab him, you put him in a cupboard, you go, you're not coming out. He goes mad for about a year, then he yeah. thanks you for it. Yeah. So block fat people in a cupboard. And you just put carrots under the door. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's got to be some responsibility. Can't grab Ricky and just a cupboard over there. <laughs> you've got to take some responsibility, haven't you? Now, if it's your own fat kid, stick him in your cupboard. But what I'm saying is, as a counsellor, I'm not spending taxpayers' money on cupboards to put the fat kid in. <laughs> <laughs> so, back at the Chosen 500 in ancient Greece, right, you're one of them. What other things? We I, I like that saying, the one about, um, do to others as you'd like to be treated yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Pop that on a leaflet. Pop it through the door. But you seem to be doing a lot of leafleting. That seems to be <laughs> your entire governance seems to be guided by <laughs> popping leaflets through doors. And I get a lot of leaflets, so I presume the rest of the country does, and it's not always working. So maybe yeah. sometimes you've got to instigate something a little bit more strong minded than fucking leaflets, my friend. But yeah. Maybe you've got to make also, a couple of laws. Thing you've got to every individual up. can go, how would I want to be treated? Um, <laughs> well, I'd want someone to throw cake at me. Yeah. Because I'm a greedy bastard. I would want right. someone to steal my telly. I'd, I'd probably start on the way you look. Right, go on. I'd just, I'd just say, right, you know, make an effort, tidy up your house, and I'd, I'd have some sort of, um... I'm poor. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You can still tidy up, Can we get better houses, then? Because... Well, look what? after the one that we've let you. Yeah, get get rid of that down. old mattress that's in your garden there. <laughs> Clean the windows, and then we might give you a nicer one. <laughs> At the moment, you don't deserve anything nicer. And that's what I'm saying. You've got to be honest with these people. Wake them up. I like that. Sure, like you've got to be honest with them. You've got to wake them up through, through the heavy leafleting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But do you see the problem with some of what you're saying, Carl, is that it's very hard to, uh, to enforce that in yeah. law because it seems unjust and unfair. You, you can't really start legislating against people's looks or whether they want, I mean, you, you have to keep your mean, house tidy. I mean, who decides how tidy it has to be? It's the tidy police. I mean, that's yeah. a strange. Well, hold on, though. I, I don't. I am. Um, I am. Um, I like wearing sort of these these um, denims. It expresses who I am, and I like wearing a beard because I, I just think it's natural. I don't like really like shaving, and um, yeah, I, I I like this sort of smell. I like this smell of bo. That's um, who I am as a person. So I don't, how can you impose that on me just to be part of the society? Who are you to infringe my rights as an individual? I, I, what do you want out of life? Well, no, I, th I think I just like to say I, I don't. I don't want to conform. I don't want to just shave and wear a suit and right. you know I keep myself to myself. And I like to uh, just grow a beard and um, and eat and eat porridge with my hands. I'm not hurting anyone, so I don't know why. I don't know why I have to conform to that society. Well, I, I, there's nothing I can do for you. Mm. You're yeah, wa wasting my time. Really. Yeah. Although I do feel ill, I need to um, I need to go to hospital now. Um, mm. So uh, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go to hospital now. If that's all right. Is, is there is there is there care for me? Well, what's yeah. up with you? Um, 
I've got, I've got, um, diseases from, like, eating with my hands and there's, like, things growing in my beard. Right. Um, so we just, we clean that up for me now. No, cause so it's all been brought on yourself. Well, no, but that's, that's irrelevant. A lot of people bring things on themselves, but you can't just, like, ignore them because it's just part of it's a bad society. That's well, so how do they person. learn then? How I don't do know why learn? I'm being punished for being stupid. How do they learn then? Well, I don't well why I've got to worry about well, you. I've got, well, I've got proper ill people. Well, they You had a kid whinging at me this morning because his dad was a mong. <laughs> See, in China, you can only have, uh, one child, can't you? Is that something you feel we should bring in here? Uh, yeah, I think we, we've got to, um, I don't know about one kid. I, I just sort of concentrate on who can have a kid. Okay. As opposed to, you know, if someone's got a load of money and they're good at looking after kids, let Madonna have as many as she wants. Mm. But if it's but someone yeah, but who's, who's... Oh, yeah, but then... So but social then, engineering you want yeah, to do. Yeah, but then, but hold on. Though, but what use are they then? If you're bringing them into a poor family, what's the point? What good is that for anyone? It's not good for the people who've had the kids. So who's deciding who who's allowed to have how many kids? Yeah, Are you deciding? I, I was, I was uh, brought into the poor family, wasn't I? What? I was brought into a poor family. Yeah, no, I'm talking, I'm talking really poor. So, third world? No. Well, poorer than that, poorer than no money at all? No, I'm somewhere in the middle again. You've gone too far the other way. Okay, Why so you always got to go the other way? Cornwall. I just mean like the people who I've told you about on the estate sometimes who had that one who chased cars and stuff. <laughs> he wasn't happy. They didn't care if he was there or not. What's the point? Right. <laughs> like, so hang on. So let's imagine so that Ricky and I, our husband and wife, we've come in, right? What's your questions to us to establish whether we were allowed to have a couple of kids? Hello. Hello. Thanks, um, for, thanks for coming. And me and my husband, um, we, we can't have children. Why not? Um, because uh, he's, he's got no sperm at all. Okay. He had one sperm and it was, it was t ridiculous. It was awful. It just came out like a dead anchovy. Right. And what's... The, uh, you're meant to have 300 million tiny ones and he had one big one it was horrible i had to pull it out it was like a leech and uh and also i've uh it was no i haven't, I haven't got a vagina so it was no place completely to smooth it. then like an action man yeah it was just that i don't know uh, but we we love children and um uh, uh, uh we wondered if we we could um have a child what do you do for the living what what do you do what's your work uh i'm a rapist <laughs> Right. And I dispose of the bodies. Right. Uh, well, fill out this <laughs> form. I should have clarified. A rapist murderer. Yeah. yeah. Fill out the form. Yeah. He does it in the wrong order as well, I must yeah. say so. Uh, no, number of times I've disposed of the bodies and I haven't made that one. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> just wondered um, what else you need to know about us. We, because even though that I That was our little joke, by the way. Yeah, he well, doesn't, he doesn't rape. Uh, I work in, uh, work in an office. He works in an office um, in, uh, in, uh, in the town. But uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a housewife. She's I think a housewife. I'm, I'm making a little nest for when we have, uh, we adopt a little a little child. We don't earn a great deal of money, but we're good parents. We're we very think. good parents. How, what's, what's that based on? How, how well, we're good people, on? you know, mm. I mean, aside from a few naughty jokes. We're God-fearing people. We believe that, um, uh, God is watching all of us and, um, we believe in, in the Old Testament. And, and sometimes uh, he tells us to, to kill and rape. Yeah, sometimes he does, yeah. Uh, particularly, um, we, we've stoned a couple of homosexuals this week alone. Cause it, uh, so we're joking again. We're joking course. again. Or we don't, we, uh, we don't believe in God. We're, um, we're a, a, from an atheist and believe that our time on earth is, is, is all we have and then when we die we become worms, mate. Right. Uh, well you filled but out But we've already, we've already painted the back bedroom. That's ready for the little child. We painted it black. Because, yeah. um, we, we want our child to be a Satanist. Right. Joking again. Little joke joking again. We want, little joke. Be, we want him to be an accountant. Right. Yeah. Um. Gay accountant. <laughs> Uh, Some would say the same thing, only yeah, joking, of I course. Think, I think there's too much in society where people are pressured to be heterosexual, so we're, we're gonna try and make ours a homosexual. Mm, so we, we, we don't care whether you get a homosexual or a heterosexual, but um, I'll tell you, by the time he's 14, he will be as, um, as queer as the Ace of Spades. Right, so you've filled out the form. Filled out the form. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put that in, get it processed. Right. Okay, but what kind of questions are you gonna ask us? None, none really. No. <laughs> It's just my job. You're happy. You're happy my job with to us. to pass the forms on. We've passed the interview. Because that's the sort of world we're living now. <laughs> oh! Oh, uh, God! We don't want a child. We don't want a child, actually. But do you know where we could buy a knife? <laughs> and a <snack? laughs> We talked about the, the little fella planting a tree that he will never sit under. He's given that to a... The next generation, okay? Now, big discussion about donor cards. Of course, there's no reason not to give your kidneys away. 
after your death to all your organs. It's, they're no, no good to you, and you'll be helping life. It's 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 perverse to me that you wouldn't want to donate your body to a, a worthy cause after your death. Medical research, whatever. Um, you agree with that, don't you? Um, well, you know how I feel about it a little bit. I don't like the idea of certain bits. Why not? What does it matter? Just because there's certain bits that are really personal to you, aren't they? No, there's not. What 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 bit is more personal than another bit to you? Well, like I've said, my eyes. They're my eyes. They're the stuff I like. Yeah. Now, but what happens if someone else has them? And, and they start looking at stuff I don't like. But I don't you, like the idea of that. But that's ridiculous, because your eyes are, <laughs> they're just bits of tissue. They, they haven't got no, your but we don't, we don't know, because they've we found out know. there's something called a cellular something or other that I've told you about, about the person who had right. some sort of operation and right. looked like in yellow biscuits. I've yeah, told you about Yeah, but that's bollocks. It's the same you thing told with us the about eyes. it, but I dismissed it as bollocks well, immediately. Well, other, Not just because you said no. it, because it was intrinsically bollocks. No. But it could work the other way anyway, where no. the person who has my eyes starts like looking at ants and insects and stuff. I'm right, it's carry all bollocks. On. Again, this is all bollocks. Got none of your memories, none of your thoughts, none of your reasoning, n nothing of you, none of your personality. They're just a collection of cells that now have light going through them and making this new person see. They're a lens. Mm. They're a lens. That's all they are. Mm. So there's no there's no reason why, you know, this is a crazy thing isn't it when people started saying that they wanted their organs to go to a particular race of person and that, and obviously that's illegal mm. um also it shouldn't be the choice really i think you should have that um opting out that you have to say that you don't want your organs given after and if you die then they assume that the, those organs are up for grabs because there's a, there's a shortage so what do you think of that like i say they can have they can have certain bits they're not having the eyes. I, I think that's eyes. fair. They, what, can they have the cock and balls? Uh, I'd prefer it if they didn't. You're saying no, no one's gonna have my eyes or my cock and bollocks. What ever. if the tables were turned? Yeah. What if someone said, Carl, you've lost your cock and bollocks in a terrible accident. Sorry, we put some flowers at the scene of it. It's brightened that area up. <laughs> but, um, we've found a, a donor who's happy to give, him, give you his cock and bollocks. He's dead, but his cock and bollocks we kept on Would ice. Would you accept then. them? They're, they're absolutely lovely match. Better than yours. Yeah. Bigger, younger. Yeah, you go on, then, I'll have them. So you would, so, you see, you'd have someone else's cock and bollocks, but then you wouldn't donate yours to someone but else. what about this? What if you, what if you discovered later, right, that the person who donated the cock and bollocks, right, was a sex pervert? <laughs> was it, was a homosexual sex pervert? I, I don't think, though, that I'd bother <laughs> looking into the history of these cock and bollocks. You it's just not accept like, them. uh, you know. <laughs> you'd accept them willy nilly, but what <laughs> if, what if you, you just found out by that chance? That was his name, that was his name, willy nilly. That was his stage name. And come on and show them by chance. Yeah. How do I find out by chance? What's the scenario? They there? say, well, the doctor goes, I should um, tell you, and I, I know you believe in a load of shit about yellow biscuits and bollocks like that, so I'll just tell you in case anything goes weird. This was a sex pervert's um, cock and bollocks, so uh, if, you, if you find that you're sticking these through letterboxes, don't worry, it's not your fault. It's where they wanted to have gone. That's, uh, Would it concern you if you accepted the cock and bollocks that had a past like that? Yeah, because the problem is, it wouldn't be that bad if I had his eyes. Right. <laughs> Why? Because then I'm seeing what he wants to see and- That doesn't and make any sense at all, no, Carl, but, but unfortunately, It makes no though. sense at all. Y y the match is wrong. The eyes don't go with the cock and bollocks anymore. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, something's gonna lose out here. Either the, the, the cock and bollocks, they're not gonna get what they want anymore, or the eyes are gonna be upset. <laughs> so are you scared of the idea to go back to your yellow biscuit analogy, that the, the cock and bollocks you inherit, that whatever the previous owner did with them- Lives on. Bollocks. That scares you, does it? Okay, there's one final scenario here, Carl. Okay. You've, uh, you haven't opted out, so your, your organs go to where they like. Now, unbeknownst to you, uh, there's a big waiting list, there's a thing, they've got, they've got all your details and you said, yeah, whatever, I don't want to know. You wouldn't want to know, would you, after you die, where it goes. You say, I don't, because you've said, you don't want to know. If you don't know, you have a lovely life. When you die, they can go anywhere. They can do what they will, okay? Now, unbeknownst to you, they have got it down. They've donated your ass, right, for use, um, to a gay rapist with AIDS, okay? So they are, 
they are saving a life there. So when you die, they go, right, we're gonna, it's still warm, get that gay rapist with AIDS round here, because that's gonna stop him raping someone, give him AIDS. He comes round, he's straight up there. He's shagging you, right? It's, he, you're, you're basically saving a life, right? We're letting him die, right? Sorry, okay. sorry, I'm confused here. What? Why is the gay rapist with AIDS got the arse? What's no, he's, he no he's, he's, he's still connected to Carl. They've donated the arse, so when, when Carl dies, the doctors go, right, we're gonna stop a, a terrible thing here. So the gay rapist can, can shag the yeah, arse? Yeah, he shags, going round, he shags Carl, gets out of his system and goes, phew, that stopped me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So. So it's just Carl's disembodied ass on a. No, no, no. It's the whole. It's the whole Carl. Oh, so Carl's dead. So they Carl. They Carl gets struck. He's having a heart attack. They go free, <laughs> clear. <laughs> they go no. We've lost him at ten o one. They go oh he's a arse donor. And they go okay. Get the where's the nearest gay rapist with AIDS live next door. Get him round here. They go okay. The, the gay rapist comes round and goes where is he? Right. He goes there he is. Right. So Carl is face down. Now they turn around. They go there, there's the arse. You got ten minutes. Then we got a bury. I'm surprised you didn't know this guy was living next door. <laughs> <laughs> so, the gay rapist gets on top, he goes, right, this is lovely, right? He's loving it, he's shagging you up. Right, now, this is the weird thing. The doctors next door, they go, okay, the gay rapist will be finished soon, um, and then we have to bury him, but we should inform his next of kin. They go, oh, it's Suzanne. They go, um, your husband's, uh, uh, Daddy's avatar. She goes, oh my god, you come round and just identify the body. Um, uh, I'd leave it a couple of minutes, but, um, then... <laughs> Then come out. She goes, "Oh God, I'll be right there." So Suzanne's on her way. The gay rapist, right? He's he's pummeling you away, right? But you will not believe this. Oh my God! The movement and the way he's shagging you, right, has started started your heart. <laughs> oh, wow. right, right? This is a stroke of amazing good <laughs> yeah, fortune, right? So you go. Oh, oh, oh. Um, he goes. Ah, oh, right. He right has a heart attack. <laughs> Right? And he flops down on you. He just like Ed butts the back of your head. So now, you're both naked, this gay rapist is up your ass, he's dead, right? The shock is a, you go, fuck me, how can I get out of this, right? You wriggle, you fall onto the floor. So now, he's on the bottom, face up, you're on top of him, he's still in you. His cock is up your ass, you're sat on him, wriggling, Suzanne walks in, goes, Carl, what the fuck are you doing? She's heard about me being dead, and she, cause she's come to yeah, the hospital. She, yeah, yeah, she goes, and they go, he's in there, and she goes, he's not dead, I can see him. They go, oh, the kid's been terrible. She bursts in, there you are, on top of him, wriggling to try and get his knob out of your ass, right? You're sitting on a, a man who's dead. What do you say? I, I just say we got a John Booper. <laughs> It's hard, isn't it, to imagine yourself uh, a different period in time and how you would have reacted. Now, if you think about America in the 1950s, black people still very much second-class citizens. You've obviously heard of the famous Rosa Parks incident, in which um, she was obliged mm -hmm. to move on the bus from where she was sat to somewhere else, and she chose not to, and she was arrested for it. it became very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus, what would you do? Um, am, am I far from where I'm, I'm getting off? Yeah, you <laughs> 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 so once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus, you've still got a number of stops, you live further away than Rosa does because you've got a lovely big house where she shouldn't have a lovely place, she can't afford it. So you've got to stay on that bus. You've seen this now, you've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you. Maybe you've got on that bus as a privileged white man and she refuses to get up on your behalf. Uh, I'd probably go, it's all right, I'm, I'm standing, I'm all right. But why would you say that? Because you're thinking of the modern day car, you're not thinking of the man from the 1950s. Well, we Whereas don't, well, the thing is, well, we don't have to, we don't have to go back in time. Or, uh, we can go to a country now where you'd see an injustice, where you were outnumbered by the law of the land. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second class citizens and she can't come with you? Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say, uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the, to the shopping centre. We're only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you? Cause there's no one sat next to you down there. I'm a bit crammed in up here. There's more blokes <laughs> than the bus. I'll see you in a minute. It's not a big issue. I've done it on the train. 
Well, I booked tickets and they've ended up being different tickets. I've gone, oh, I'll see you in an hour and a half. I've got an iPod. But it's, so you went first class and but she that's, was But, in, that's, in but that's luck. That's, that's luck. That's circumstance. One is, one is policy. Surely you can just see the difference between a principle and a bit of luck. Uh, but it's what you get used to at the end of the day. I mean, I'm not walking past them slapping them on the back of the head. I'm getting on and it's just that's where they sit, that's where we sit. Like men and women sit going into a separate toilet. Carl, let's put this to, to you, I mean, obviously this is too much for your head to, you're on a bus, right, and there's a few white people and they're- I'm the driver. And they're being racist to uh, a black kid. Right, I'd go, if I'm driving, I'd go, Listen, lads, stop that, will you? If you're going to be racist, can you get off at the next stop and well, do it there? Well, you know, we've all, we've, we've all had a tough day. It's the end of the day. We just all want to go home. We've all been working. Right. Uh, he's not in your way. He's sat in his own seat. Sit back. Calm down. Had enough. But, but what if they said, no, we want, we usually sit there. We want that seat. Would you think either black kid's a troublemaker? Or just, you, you, would you go, come on, just move, mate. It'd be peaceful. I'd, I'd go, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to move so this is calmed down? Or no, 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 you shouldn't say that. He doesn't, he, he doesn't matter if he wants to move or not. It's his right, right. not to move. Uh, do what you want, then. If you want to stay there and fight your own No, 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 no. he again. wants to stay there. Don't you have, surely you come, surely you want to be on the side of right. I'm just doing my job here. I'm sat driving a bus. I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here and getting a load of grief okay. off some people right, at the end of the but day. But think bigger than the bus rule. It's not just a bus thing, all right? Just imagine that you're not a bus driver. All right? No, but that's what bigger. we're talking about here. But yes, but Ricky's trying to make a point. It's an analogy again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what, way. It yeah. could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies if or to aggression. If, if someone's attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help. You go, no, he, no, oh, I could get her here. Because I know the full story here. But this is what I'm saying well, about you Rosie, full story here? Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she sat on the bus. How did it work? I'll she sat on the bus, she sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. The middle section of the bus, uh, what, black people could sit there, but it was uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit, depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in a seat, some more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well no, actually this is no longer the black section, there is no black section, because there's enough white people, you've got to stand up. Right. And she decided, no, I'm not going to get up, it's my right to be able to sit on this bus, as a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white, and that was why she got arrested. Well, she lost in the end, didn't she? What do you mean she lost in the end? There's a black president. Yeah, but it's not because of her getting on a bus. That's oh. just because times change. Yes, in a way well, it is. I don't know. Because it she is. became a spearhead of the civil rights movement that was we spearheaded had a, we, by t Martin Luther King. But all those little things go towards change. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, I've, I, who's, who's been in a right mood. Might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's, he's fed up, he's, had, he's up to here with it. So, so she's pissed up there. She's she's pissed up now. No, no, no the person the sat next to her. Yeah. Might have even been a black bloke who's been working hard, and he's like, I don't want this. But it's interesting you say the that. The bus pulls over, the Be police are called in. But you say, this, it's interesting you say that, because in the, in the Rosa Parks incident, there were a number of other black men, all of whom did stand up. I think five of them were there, and four of them stood up, and she stayed sat down. So there was four people there who did choose the easier route, the easier life, and she stayed sat down, and she's the one who went to prison, and she's the one who's remembered, because of what she did on that day. It's difficult, isn't it? If I was on there, I'd weigh her up, you know, is this woman doing this as like a good cause? Or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seemed like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now that's fine, you'll always get people who do what they want and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand up, this is, this is the day I'm going to do it. It's just happened to, she was fed up that day, she didn't want to get up. Lazy. <laughs> she might just go around law breaking all the time <laughs> and she's remembered now because she's she's made a change about bus seats but when she got up that morning did she say i'm going to do that or has she been fly tipping before she got on the bus <laughs> <laughs> this is what i'm saying is she just is she just a, a, no, you know a, no she's not a troublemaker she's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. It's, I, yeah. The fact that Carl's managed to find an ambiguity in it I is know. extraordinary. I love it. Tell me something else about Rosie Parks. Oh, for God's oh. sake. I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't realise I had to, I didn't realise it would be this difficult. Um, Carl, 
Thomas Jefferson, you know who he is, once observed, a nation as a society forms a moral person, and every member of it is personally responsible for his society. But Jefferson's fellow countryman, as you know, the American writer and intellectual Randolph Bourne, mm. noted some years later, society is one vast conspiracy for carving one into a kind of statue it likes and then placing it in the most convenient niche it has. So one saying, no, this is why we're moral people. The society is great for us. It, it turns us into responsible people, okay? And we, we should love that society and make sure it's perpetuated. But Bourne said, no... No, it's just a way to mould someone into what it likes and put it into a little box so it can't hurt anyone. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's not, again, it's... No, <laughs> which both, both, of them, both of them are right. Both of them are right, but they're contradictory. They're both opinions. Um, yeah, they're, certainly, they're certainly opinions. But, you, uh, I mean, I, I don't know why I am the way I am. It just happens, doesn't it? Uh, you know, I don't like killing a fly. No one would stop me if I did. There's something in me that goes, don't do that. Right. So this is a very important theory because you're basically saying, well, you could be saying one of two things. You could be saying that goodness is innate. Not likely. No. <laughs> or he could be saying that um, there's a morality that transcends rules and society pressure. Whether or something's legal or not doesn't mean that you have to do it because it's legal. And That's it doesn't what mean I meant. you don't. Yeah? yeah? Is that the one you meant? That's what I meant. Um. There was a bit of trouble in our yard the other day. Right. Between uh, a wasp and a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, is there any point to this at all, or are you just going to tell us you saw Are you going to extrapolate some analogy from this? Uh, I think so. Okay, yeah, well, let's, let's, let's see, see, let's see. Yeah. So there's a wasp. Yeah, uh, well, so look at the old scenario. Wasp, the old scenario, right? Okay. As you, as you <laughs> said, sorry, just to clarify, as you said, it was kicking off. No, right, okay. Old scenario. So you're looking I'm out there. your window. No, right. I'm, I'm in the kitchen by right. the sink. Yeah. Uh, washing up, we've got a new sink. We've mm. got a dishwasher as well, but I said, well, I'll use the sink, we've paid for it. Let's yeah. give it a go. So you're like a Luddite threatened by the technology. You're thinking your worth will be taken away, your reason uh, in the world will be taken away by the dishwasher. So a you're like, no, bit. Suzanne, we've got a dishwasher, but I am going to carry on. You're going to need me. I want to show I'm needed. I wanted to use it. It's like, I don't understand it if someone's got a really nice car, but they have a chauffeur. Drive it. It's yours. Enjoy it. Enjoy your car. Well, I Feel a gear car. change. Yeah, but you don't drive. No, I know. Yeah, so that's all right. But what I'm saying is, I've got a sink, I've got a dishwasher. What am I doing? If I put the dishwasher on, what am I going to do? I'm just going to sit down and do nothing. Probably. Wash up then. Do something useful. I do a better job than the machine does. Well, get rid of the machine altogether then? No, because Why? sometimes I might want to go for a walk or something. Well, when you go for a walk all the time, it's good for you. I'd had a walk in the morning. Anyway, so, I'm washing well, up. That was all the prelude to the wasp and the crazy <laughs> story. <laughs> it better be <laughs> fucking good to top that. <laughs> <laughs> His life's so complicated. For a man who does nothing at all, right? <laughs> his, wife, his life is so complicated. No, because it's the same thing. The kitchen's failing you. All so right, I, you're I just washing wanna, up. Okay, right. You're using a new go. sink. The dishwasher's there. It's not doing anything. It's not even plugged in. It's pointless. Right. What's going on? I'm washing up the few plates. Right. The kitchen door's open. Right. Suzanne says, "Oh my God, look at that! What? There's a like a, a, a wasp and a cricket having a wrestle." <laughs> I've never seen it before. Right. Wait, right. wait, wait. Are you sure this wasn't Mexican television and it actually <laughs> was a sporting event? Two people dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're there, wrestling, and I was like, well, stop them then. So stop she whoa, 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 whoa. You don't interfere with fucking Rosa Parks. Why are you interfering <laughs> with a wasp and a cricket? Because one, I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> So this is much bigger metaphor than black no, and because, white. Because listen, this is more important than apartheid and segregation. <laughs> because team. I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> because I've, I've, they they were sort of wrestling. I said, and my hands were wet, so I couldn't do anything. I, I always overdo it with a fairy liquid. Yeah, sure. So she's she's there. I say, break, separate them. <laughs> I said, poor Suzanne. Now, so she uses a tea towel, flicks them. Flick, clever, yeah. good right. thinking. The the wasp goes its own way. The cricket sort of jumping about a bit. But um, who was fighting it? So I'm sort of saying that is really weird because wasps are changing quicker than anything else that I keep my eye on. Okay, well that's just your theory and it's not based on anything. Well, I told you a couple of years back I saw one eating chicken. I shouldn't <laughs> be doing it. 
<laughs> so anyway, so now they're causing trouble with a cricket. Whoa, how do you know it was the wasp fault? This is prejudice. Why do you think it was the wasp fault? What, what, what if the cricket would have started it? What if the cricket's got a society that go, we hate wasps, we hate their stripes. We hate them. If they come here, fight them. If everyone comes down here, fight them. How do you know it wasn't the cricket that started that? Well, I suppose at that time I didn't. But since oh I subsequent information oh okay through. sorry okay, so anyway like Columbo, it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I saw all that we broke it up the cricket was sort of shaking a bit <laughs> definitely yeah. not definitely not it was shaking a little bit yeah so I sort of prodded it put a little leaf over it because it was a hot day thought I'll put a leaf there so it doesn't get overheated I love I'll this like it's it. done the marathon it's got a little <laughs> it's got Mars on the leaf written so, on the leaf and now it's just walking over the little medal so Suzanne we you know we I leave it for a bit leave it on. what about did you say half an hour about, about, about left it for half an hour what did Suzanne want to do she wanted to interfere did she, she want, what did she want to do just sort of like yeah, um, she just sort of said leave it stop messing with it it's probably a little bit knocked out a little bit stunned sure let's right. get on with our lives she said yeah. so <laughs> I put the leaf on it you've got in too much very liquid why don't we use the dishwasher <laughs> we go I was just pouring the grid you dopey bald cunt so we go off and half an hour later I get back in I'm gonna, I said I'm gonna go and see the where'd cricket. you go where'd you go just for a walk but hold on why did you put the, the Dish in the dishwasher and go for a walk. I don't understand. So now you're because so, so now as a dishwasher sitting there bone idle, you're washing up when you could be walking, and then you're still. Well, it's walking. a good job I didn't go for a walk though, wasn't it? Because what? How would that have turned out? That fight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there would have just been a so anyway, on your back door. Porch. So I've been out, back in, have a look. Cricket's still there. Noticed one of its legs gone. Oh. Don't know if the wasp did that or the tea towel flick. Or it was already disabled and that's why the wasp thought this is an easy one. What if the wasp was helping it? It wasn't, no, honestly. But what it if was, going, it was such a commotion? Because we, we're such friends and humans don't understand us and anyone interfered would definitely don't understand us, right? He's not an entomologist. Well, right? this is when I got the computer out. Right. Had a look. And it's a, uh, what was it called? Brilliant. Oh, I can't remember. What happened is the wasp apparently does this a lot. <laughs> and it stings them in the head. Right, not this particular. There wasn't like a little profile of this particular wasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a kind of it's, just, it's just an incident that just happens a lot between wasp, uh, wasps and crickets. Right. right. So it, it stung it in the head, mm. and what happens is it's that whole thing that we've talked about before, where it lays an egg. Right. So I was I was sort of having a look, seeing if I could see any sort of holes in its head, uh, and it just kept sort of moving its one leg, like oh I can't I can't handle this. So it means moving its one leg. It was sort of just moving its one leg quite slowly, like it's just come out from one an operation. Leg. It's lost one leg, you said. Yeah, it's lost one. Yeah, it's moving five legs slowly. No, it's just it's one big one. We've got one big leg. One big leg <laughs> at the back now. It's normally got two that it uses to jump. Oh, I see. So, uh, okay. So it's now right. it's only got one. It's sort of like oh, it looks grass. Is it not a grasshopper if it's jump? Is it? Not a, what colour was it? Is it like sort of uh, beige? Oh, it's probably a cricket. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. It's important. So you were worried that crickets aren't aware of the dangers of wasps? You did a bit of leafleting amongst the cricket in community? I just had a look online and saw that, oh, it's a popular thing that happens. It's sort of like a bit of a mugging. Um, he said you can leave them for about half an hour, they normally come round and they don't know they've had an egg put in their head. But There's no way it said leave them for half an hour and they come round they don't have an egg put in their There's no way it said well, that. Well, he said they normally stunned for about half hour. Have you had an egg put in your head? <laughs> Fucking ostrich egg, by the way, it's coming out the top. So anyway, so I picked it up, I placed it under a little tree, I said it's in the shade again, mm, no wasps yeah. can see it there, let's just leave it. Mm. But you've just left that cricket to now die in agony when that mm. maggot goes round his head and comes out a wasp and leaves the carcass. Well this is when Suzanne came up and said it wasn't moving. I sorted it. What you, you sorted it? You sorted it. What do you, what you, you want to say? What do you mean? Well, I said what do you mean you sorted it? She said, oh, Reap it's best that we don't tell you. Well, what sorry, so, sorry, sorry, but, uh, it, 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 She said she sorted it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you think that we're in the Mafia and we're being wiretapped? Say what happened. No, well, she just said she sorted it and I said, what, sorted what? Because I'd forgotten about it at that point, I was painting. And she right. said the, the cricket. Right, what do you think she meant by sorted it? Well, by the look on her face, the way she said it, I've known her for long enough, so I know that she meant it's not good news. Yeah, so what So what happened? So from that, I took for granted she means... Say I, it! I've stopped, I've stopped it being... Uh, it's n no longer in misery. So what do you mean? What? What did she do? She, she crushed its head. 
Because she said it was moving well, specifically about. specifically just the head. She just crossed the head. With a stone. She got a tiny head shaped stone <laughs> and- Squashed it. Because that's where all the action is, isn't it? So she said it was- it was too cruel watching it, sort of shaking about with his one leg and stuff. Mm. He had to kill it. I imagine- I had this vision that one day- <laughs> Suzanne just having to say to his parents, um... <laughs> I've sorted it. I've sorted it. I had to put him out of his misery. What? What? I just couldn't bear to see the twitching like anymore. Know, no. I know you didn't like to know, but yeah. I just took a rock. Yeah, and just squashed its head. What was in it? There was nothing in it. <laughs> nothing. No, it just, just caved in. Was, like. there, was there an egg in it from a- No, no, no. From a no it, was like, it was like, you know when you will get a, a blown egg and then you crush it and it's just- it's, it's, it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing in it at all. Nothing in it but at I just all. think- he seems happier. I'm certainly happier. I, I, I was happier because uh, I'm, I'm much happier because he's sort of uh, he's more more sensible without the head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're still happy together, but now we use the dishwasher instead of him washing up. Yeah. When we already got one that cost more than a <laughs> What what metaphor are you taking from this? Just the way. Yeah. So that's at the beginning. There was meant to, there was, there was going to be a point you were going to extrapolate for this, like a fable. So what did you learn from that? Um, <clears throat> I thought I was doing right at the time. And well, that's, that's, it, that's isn't it? important, isn't it? And is it objective or subjective? You know, one person's evil is another person's good. Some people think abortion is the worst thing you could do. Others think it's it's a it's a a woman's right and it's it's a kindness. It's some people think that you should never kill under any circumstances. Other people say that some killing is morally right. Again, should uh, an action be judged on its intent or its result? If someone said to you. Oh, I thought I was doing a good thing, but you know, they opened the windows and your cat fell out. They thought they, would, they, they didn't even know you had a cat. Did they knock it though, or did it just jump out? It just jumped out. Well, so I'd say it's not my fault. Your no. cat's daft. No, it was hot in here. Right. I've opened the window. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not getting the blame for that. No, that wasn't my point, was it? That if you if you open the window, right? And they come home and you go, oh my god, the cat jumped out and killed itself. You go, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I opened the window, um, because I wanted to let some air in. I was doing a good thing. So I did I know it jumped out? No. No. I'd, I'd probably say, you sure they didn't do that before I got here this morning? Did you have the window open? Right. I don't think I, 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 I looks like it's been there a while. So it's a already, bit you instantly don't want to be culpable for your own actions. I mean, it is Hang your on fault. Hang on, it wasn't it me is, who did it. It is your fault the cat's dead. Yeah, it's, your, it's an accident, but nevertheless it's still your rock no, fault. No, if it's definitely me, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, it jumped out, I opened the window because it was hot in here, the cat jumped out, it's dead, let's go and get another one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wouldn't, w wouldn't worry that much about a cat. Right, well, what if it was a baby? Well, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose it is. Um, Carl, I'd like to ask you, if I may, stop twiddling that. Now, this is interesting, because you were fiddling with a bit of plastic there, and it was annoying me, and I know that a lot of things annoy Ricky, it mm. very infuriating for him. Um, <clears throat> social etiquette. Now, that's a very, uh, that, that's not obviously inscribed by law. These are just things which have built up in society. So, for instance, it's impolite to sneeze and then shake someone's hand. Yeah. It's, um, Or sneeze straight in their face and yeah. go, oh, sorry, I've got swine flu. Now, those things are obviously good practice in terms of avoiding the spread of disease, so that makes sense. But other things also, are Also, it's just to be disgusting. If, so if someone hasn't got a disease, I don't like to see someone sneeze on the pavement or sniff or scratch their arse. So, social etiquette, I mean, how do you decide, I mean, what what prevents you from being truthful and honest at all times? I don't know, there's something in you, and sometimes you can just pop it out, can't you? Uh, I've been in a situation when I've said stuff and I've thought, why did I say that? Go on. But it's not always... Uh, in the dentist, last time I went to the dentist, I sat in the reception bit, big fat woman comes up the stairs, massive she was, <laughs> had a right sweat on. <laughs> Uh, right. She gets there and uh um, breath. <sighs> yeah, she was <sighs> again, you know. I mean she was friendly, dead friendly, but kind of like, you know, leggings on. Uh sort of, you know, shoes but not on properly. She, she was stood on the heel. Yeah. You yeah. know, like she couldn't be bothered. Yeah. It's like greasy air. Um and she went up and she's been all all happy and everything. And I think that's what annoyed me. So when she sort of said, Oh yeah, I've lost weight she was talking to the woman behind the counter and she sort of said yeah I find it really difficult especially living where I live and having to come down this high street because there's so many cake shops and everything 
and she sort of said, you know, today I've walked past normally, I always have a, a coffee and a donut, but today, you know, I didn't have a coffee and a donut. And I just said, why was it shut? <laughs> right? No, you didn't. I did, honestly. <laughs> Honest to God, on my mum's life. I said, why was it shut? <laughs> She said, oh, Hold on, why did you butt in? She wasn't even talking Honestly, to you. I know, it's really, really weird. It's Wait, really weird. Did you have weird. to shout across the dentist's waiting room or no, no, it was just, it was a, it's a small waiting room, you see, you got the stairs, you go in, you've got about four chairs, and then this old desk, and I, I get on with the woman behind the counter, and I always sit close to it, and it was just me there, and I was talking to her about going to Corfu or something. She comes in sweating like some bison <laughs> up the stairs. <laughs> And, and she's there, and because she was showing off, it was like, well, you should have done it a long time ago. I think yeah. she, she annoyed me that she wanted some sort of pat on a on a big hefty fat back. <laughs> that she hadn't bothered having a donut that day. Now, maybe it's the inner me that just came out, because I remember saying it and actually getting home saying to Suzanne, oh, I said this, and I didn't even think I'd... I don't I know what you mean though. From. Sometimes you sometimes you want to go around with people and they're going, oh, I, I need. You want to put them down. You want to yeah. go. I'm, I'm stocking out with you because you're going to go straight back to that and do this, that. You know, I know you've had a lot. Just inject them in the head. Absolutely pointless. Get rid of it. Yeah, I know what you mean. But talking about social etiquette, I was in a um, flying to uh, Edinburgh and I was with um, Matt, my uh, uh, assistant, and um, there was a bloke on a mobile phone across the way. Right, he's going, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to get on the plane now. And he kept talking that loudly to people, right? And I was fuming. Then he stopped and made another call. And I, I was giving him dirty looks and Matt was going, no, sit down, sit down. And, uh, and then he was going, I am in the airport. And I shouted, he's in the airport. He didn't notice. I was shouting over. I was fuming and fuming. And Matt was just getting so embarrassed. Well, they don't see it, though. And people were looking at me like I was the mental case. Yeah. yeah. But it was so fucking loud. And I moved through to another place. But I wanted to get someone. I wanted to be policed. I wanted to go, right, there's a cunt over there swigging beer. Thinks he's a fucking Gordon Gecko player. And he's not. He's some cunt who's got his first mobile phone. Right? But, what, you know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah. is That is infringing. That is like, that's like passive smoking to me. Yeah. It annoys me when you hear these uh, awful middle-class parents talking to their kid loudly enough to let everyone know what their kid knows. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, they, they they bring up conversations because they're showing off about the kid. They, they, um, Toby, what's that you were saying earlier about you preferred Beethoven to... Right, okay, if that kid talks about Beethoven and Chopin, right? It, do you know what I mean, though? Yeah. It's okay. like people showing off, yeah. thinking that the world is interested in everything they fucking say. That that thing about um, everyone's got access, which is fine, but it's mm. those fat fucking morons on docu soaps that go, "I speak as I fucking th think." You f useless fucking blob of shit. Yes. <laughs> Have an education. Research, yeah. think, discuss, then offer your opinion. And stop your kids chewing on a fucking big ball of fat. Your mm. leg. Got someone specific in mind there? <laughs> 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 oh. Well, that's about it. Um, hope you enjoyed the Ricky Gervais Guide to Society. I think we've, uh, we've sorted everything out there, Steve. Mm. Yeah, not many questions left unanswered. No, that's, uh, pretty in-depth analysis of what society is and, and, uh, how to improve it, I think, yeah. in, in, in many ways. I hope uh, some of the big people are listening, Brown, Obama. Yeah. And they go, okay, what's Pilton going to say? Keep out of it. Unless it's an insect. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And from the little round-headed simian type thing we call Carl Pilkington. All right.